My name is Eleanor Penny and I'm here with writer and activist George Monbiot talking climate chaos, the Green New Deal and how we tackle capitalism and its devastating effects on our planet as a whole. So ideas of public luxury imply this really quite controversial idea that in order to confront climate breakdown we don't all have to like go back to stone age style lifestyles but actually this could be an opportunity to challenge an economic system which deprives us anyway of a decent livable standard of existence and this could actually be an opportunity to transform our lives for the better. Um, so what does that look like in your eyes? Like, What does public luxury in a green mm. sense mean? At the moment we have a system which is highly exclusive. Mm. Only some people can enjoy the fruits of nature, can enjoy um, uh, the natural wealth that we all inherit but most of us are deprived of. Um, and as a result of that we have huge areas of the country where there are really bad public amenities. Um, there's really rubbish housing. There's um, um, just a very poor environmental quality in general, whereas other places where richer people live, where they have everything, um, and often at the great expense of other people. So it would necessarily be far more egalitarian. There would have to be a much better sharing of natural wealth than, than we have at the moment. And that's really the only way, I think, in which we're going to get through this century. Because, I mean, obviously, the sort of free for all, the grabbing, which is, or the free for some rather, <laughs> the, the, the great sort of natural wealth grabbing, which has prevailed over the past few hundred years, that's driving us towards disaster, towards ecological disaster as well as social disaster. But, um, you know, nor can we just impose such, um, uh, environmental austerity that you're not ever going to get any support for it. We have to be able to show that something really good and positive will come out of this transition that we need to make and that is in the creation of a really prosperous public and common sphere. So I'm very interested in reviving not only the notion of um, you know, public wealth uh, vested in local authorities and to some extent in, in the central state, but particularly in communities through the commons. And the common is, um, has got three elements. It's a particular resource, it's the community that manages that resource, and it's the rules and negotiations that community creates in order to manage it. Mm -hmm. Allotments in this country are a classic example of a commons, but so is community broadband, so is, is an energy cooperative. Um, <clears throat> there's lots of different um, commons that you can create and I would love to see a general shift away from this pursuit of private wealth to a pursuit of common wealth where um, we have, I mean the commons is a system um, in which everybody has an equal share of either the resource or the products of the resource. So with allotments, for instance, everyone has the same sh size of land, mm. but you keep the prod produce that you grow from that land. So you're sharing the resource, not the produce. Um, and, um, and it's also inalienable. You can't sell it, you can't give it away. And so it's much more in tune with the creation of a green economy um, because you're always looking at the long-term prospects of that resource rather than just the immediate money that you can make from breaking it up and selling it off. Um, you, know, you don't get asset stripping in a commons. And when we're talking about the returning of resources and natural and public wealth to people from whom it's been snatched, to people who've been dispossessed in the system, um, something that's often missing from our conversations is the effect of colonialism, mm. which was one of the major drivers of capitalism and hence mm. one of the uh, mainstays of climate breakdown as we know it today. So how can we bring things like reparations and colonial justice into what we envision for a just transition? Yeah. Um, colonialism is a great big vacuum cleaner which sucks <laughs> wealth out of other parts of the world and concentrates it in, in the imperial centre. Um, and, um, and it does so through capturing people's land, through capturing their labour, and through capturing their other resources, commodifying them, 
and effectively forcing people into bondage. I, you know, we hear about the liberating potential of capitalism, and for some people it certainly liberated them. Um, but in 1800, for example, something like three quarters of the world's people were in servitude of one kind or another. They were either outright slaves, they were bonded labor, or they were serfs. Um, and that's what the system demanded. Um, in, in order for um, capital to flourish, you basically had to force people in, in to, into servitude of one kind or, or, or another. And, um, and, and that system is in different ways perpetuated today. Um, you get the, 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 the center of accumulation and then you get your sacrifice zones, your extraction zone from which you take resources at far less than the, their value. Um, and those resources might be minerals or they might be labor. And then the dumping zone where you release all the pollution, um, often with devastating consequences for local people. It's expanded to the extent that virtually the whole world is both an extraction zone and a dumping ground. Um, and and the, the center is also the sacrifice zone um, because it's, it's a total system. It, it's a system of total war against the living planet and the people who seek to defend it on, on behalf of extreme wealth. Um, and, um, and so it's as if colonialism has expanded to, to swallow the world. In terms of confronting capital and making sure that power is returned to the people, whether through climate reparations or through worker ownership funds, that kind of thing, a lot of people are talking about a Green New Deal as the way in which we prevent the worst effects of climate chaos. What do you make of the Green New Deal? Well, I'm very excited by the Green New Deal that, that Labour has just agreed. And I really hope to see a government coming into office which will now implement that. Um, and, and I think that the 2030 deadline is, is fantastic. That's much closer to what the science says we need than the government's current 2050 deadline, which is all a bit vague and hopeless anyway. Mm. So this is really a brilliant thing to build on. There's, there's obviously a lot more work to be done to turn it into reality, to work out exactly what it's going to mean in practice. But I think it's the first step towards structural change. We were talking earlier about how you, you start to change the minor structures while at the same time working towards this total systemic change. So this at least can start to change the minor structures and, and to replace some of our deadly polluting technologies um, with much more benign ones, to leave fossil fuels in the ground, that's the key task. I also want to see it drawing carbon dioxide out of the air through um, ecological restoration, an equally important task. George, thank Is you it? so much. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Yes.